Welcome to another edition of Tampa Bay Insiders, where we give you an opportunity to meet some of the folks that uh, make decisions that affect our community and get to know them a little bit better. I'm Louise Thompson. I'm the Executive Director of Tampa Bay Community Network, and I'm delighted to present our uh, Councilman for District 4, South Tampa, John Dingfelder. Welcome, John. I'm glad that you could be here Thanks, today. It's my pleasure to be here. Uh, we only have a very short time to get to know a lot about you, so let's dig right in there. Are you from Tampa originally? I am. I'm, uh, I guess, becoming more and more rare. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a native. I was born in Tampa General Hospital in 56, and uh, we lived here. F uh, well, my, my dad's always lived here, but, uh, but as a family, we, I lived here to, for about nine years, uh -huh. and then we moved to New Jersey, okay. my mother and my brother and sister, and uh, so I had some of the formative years uh, both here and in New Jersey, and then when I uh, graduated high school up there, I said, well, where do I want to be? And I said, I'm coming back to Florida, so I came back to the University of Florida for an undergraduate degree in agriculture, of all things. Wow, oh, how'd that happen? Were you really, were you interested in, uh, in, in farming, orange groves? What was well, that? Well, actually, my grandfather was in agriculture, my father's in agriculture, uh, and I wanted to be a veterinarian. Wow. And uh, they were just opening up a vet school uh, in Gainesville at the time. But, uh, you know, when you're young, things change, and, uh, and I, instead of being a vet, I ended up uh, being an attorney. So, uh, you know, but, some, you know, what I, what I tell people is, uh, you know, as a vet, I might have shoveled it this way. As an attorney, I shoveled it another <laughs> way. That was going to be a question right then and there. What's the similarity? I know, I know when we interviewed uh, Charlie Miranda, he said horses uh, and... Uh, constituents. <laughs> horses and politics have some, some things that are the same with them. And, of course, he's been involved I in... Yeah, I think you have to be very patient uh, with, your, you know, with your animals as a vet. And... Uh, and hopefully uh, with our constituents as well. Was there some moment that said, no, I want to be a lawyer? Um, no, you know, I never had one of those Perry Mason moments like a lot of my peers <laughs> did. It's just, uh, you know, I, I actually, um, I was putting uh, my, my ex-wife uh, through law school in Tallahassee. Uh -huh. And uh, I had a couple of, I had a bachelor's and a master's degree in agriculture. And, and then I sort of had this epiphany that, that uh, I, I looked around the, you know, the law school and I was sitting in on some of uh, the classes and stuff, and I said, this is really interesting. I think I'll give it a shot. So it was kind of happenstance. <laughs> wow, that's really something. Okay, yeah. so you went to school up in Tallahassee, and then you came back down to Tampa? Yeah, yeah Gainesville, v Virginia Tech for a master's degree, Tallahassee for, uh, to start my law degree, and then I actually finished my law degree back in Gainesville again. And then um, uh, went up to New Jersey, back to New Jersey for one year of, of practice, and, and we decided that it was just too cold and... It's not, not necessarily where not we're... Not enough beach. Yeah. Or you got to go some distance. I didn't want to raise the kids up there. Mm -hmm. uh, really, really liked uh, Florida and, and spe specifically Tampa. So I came back uh, in, nine, uh, let's see, right around 89. Mm -hmm. uh, went with a big law firm for a while. What and, kind of law uh, were you practicing? Um, I've, I've mostly done uh, litigation, civil litigation, through most of my career, although that's actually... I've had some uh, straying from that too. Mm -hmm. um, I'm back at, you know, years later, almost 20 years later, I'm back at civil litigation now. And, uh, but in the interim, I've done land use, uh, I've done uh, zoning issues. I was at the county attorney's office. I think that's when you and I might have first yeah, met. Probably so. And uh, uh, working under Emmy Acton. Uh, mm -hmm. and Fred Carl back then, mm -hmm. back in the day. So what, what, what were you working on when you were with the county attorney's office? Well, we had some, you know, fast Was that issues, land, zoning, uh, that kind of the thing? The land use issues, the zoning issues, which was wonderful preparation for what I do today on city council. Um, I learned uh, so much from uh, the planners, uh, uh, Ray Shimanti and, and other people at the planning commission and other planning staff at the county. And I learned about what planning was and, you know, and growth management. And at the time, you know, Growth Management Act was had just been adopted in 85. So right. it, wasn't, it wasn't that old, and everybody was still learning it. And, Try and um, understand the word con congruent? No, yeah, concurrency. Concurrency. And consistency. Yeah, and right, right. Growth, right. You know, all those growth Which management. Which we, we should explain. Consi uh, the, uh, the concurrency. Yeah, the concurrency, what that really means. Well, concurrency is, is an important issue, especially probably more in the county than in the city. But basically it means that you should have your services in place 
or at least you should be able to fund your services before you approve uh, growth. Or simultaneously, does it not? Right. Or right. simultaneously? It, yes, in some but concurrent fashion, and that's where the word comes from. But that doesn't always seem to happen, it, right? Because you know, we have an overload of roads sometimes before or still after a development's gone in. I mean, right. it is... I mean, I think in principle it's a very smart concept. And the, and right. the other part of it is, is that growth should pay for itself. Uh, which also doesn't always seem to happen. It doesn't. Ha it and hasn't it, happened in our county, and uh, only recently did they uh, raise the impact fees to try to pay for this. Right, correct. Right. And um, and, po and probably not even enough. The um, the you know and, and and listen in the city of Tampa, um, you know in New Tampa, you know we have tremendous congestion. I mean, people in South Tampa in my district complain about traffic. You know, they got to wait two turns of the light. You know what I mean? But in New Tampa, you know, it might take them you know, 40 minutes to just get out of their own neighborhood. And, and uh, you know, so, so it's all relative, but um, we have some, tr you know, serious traffic concerns. And that's one of the reasons that I think as a community we're looking at uh, some mass transit issues, which are really, you know, on the forefront. When you, uh, so he, you were practicing law down here, both for the county and then privately with a private law firm, and then right. somehow between one and the other you decided to, what, teach school? <laughs> I've had, yeah, I've done a lot of different things, uh, uh, but, it, you know, I find them all interesting. Um, I, I had practiced law, I want to say, about 10 or 12 years, um, and then um, uh, I guess I was hitting 40. You know, a lot of guys uh, hit 40, do that uh, crisis, you know, the midlife crisis thing. Go you out didn't and buy a Jaguar? Didn't go out and buy a red Jaguar or, or something, but, it, yeah. but instead I took the economical approach and, and I said, I turned to, to my wife, Lynn, and and, I, and we were newlyweds, and I said, honey, I said, I think I really need a sort of a life change. And, uh, and, I, you know, and I said, I, I think I'd like to teach. You know, my children were sort of growing up at that point, you know, junior high and high school, and, you know, they didn't need me as much, you know. So, so, uh, so I went over the school board with my three degrees in hand, and I said, uh, you know, I'd like to teach. What do, you, what do you want me to teach? I was thinking about social studies or some sort of law-related stuff. And they looked at my background, which was math and science from the agriculture in the pre-vet curriculum, and, oh. they, and they said, oh, no, they said, we need math and science teachers. And so for the next three years, uh, I taught two years of science at Booker T. Washington Middle School, which is sort of in the inner city uh, near, near Central Park Village. And, um, and then I taught uh, high school uh, algebra down at Robinson High in my district, um, which later became my district. But anyway... Um, uh, and I loved it. I, I still have students, a student contacted me yesterday. I taught her in seventh grade at Booker T. Washington, and now she's in law school up in Gainesville. And, did did uh, you go directly from teaching then into the politics? Um, or did you go back into law for a minute? Let's or? See, I did. Well, I've always been in law. Um, even when I was teaching, I actually, after school, I'd go over to a law firm and supplement my teaching income with a little bit of law. And, I, you know, I wanted to stay current because right. I had a feeling that eventually I would, you know, come back to full-time law. But um, I, right after I was done teaching um, uh, three years, Julie Holt and the public defender approached me. Mm -hmm. And, um, and uh, she and I were chatting about who knows what. And, uh, and she said, well, you know, I said, you know, I've never done jury trials. I have call myself a litigator, but in civil litigation, you rarely, rarely go to, you know, to a trial. And, um, and especially the, you know, bigger cases that I had worked on. And, and so she said, you want jury trials? Come to my office. And so I did. And, and I worked uh, in the public defender's office as an assistant public defender under Julie Holt for about, uh, uh, about two and a half years, something like that. Mm -hmm. and, and then I decided to run for office. What, was there a... A prompting event like did you get ticked off about something because I it seems to me that sometimes it's just uh, I found that people are annoyed about something want something changed uh, don't like the way uh, government's running you know I, I agree with you some people not you yeah some people get to government that way I remember um, like Phyllis Buzanski uh, you know, she was upset about some th some things in county government, right. and she ran, and then. Pat uh, Frank, she was she initially got in because of some school issues. Uh, she got on the school, school board. board and right, and Ed Zaranchik was into the environmental issues with oh, the Sierra Club, right. and he wanted to make change that way. With me, I can't say it was one of those uh, one of those type of events. I think what happened with me was when I was in the county commission. Um, when I was working for the Board of County Commissioners as an assistant county attorney, I used to sit with them mm -hmm. um, on land use issues, 
you know, and we had, that was a great kind of commission. If you, if you recall, uh, you know, it was Phyllis Buzanski and Ed Taranchik and Pam Iorio and um, uh, Jim Selvey and, and, and that group. And it was a, it was a thoughtful, you know, intelligent uh, group um, that, you know, that I enjoyed working with. And I looked around and I, you know, and I said, you know what? I said, I really like this sort of decision making. I like the policy making mm -hmm. and, and I could do this. And, and, and I just felt very comfortable in the environment and I felt that I could use the skills that I had and that I had acquired over the years both in school and elsewhere and uh, just take those and, and, you know, and turn them into something uh, positive for the community in terms of you know, decision making. And so you ran for county commission. I ran for county commission. And you lost. And I, I did. One of the, I, I think one of the most fascinating things, and even this was with the Charlie, and I'm sure if I were interviewing Pat, it would be the same, is I think it's really important for viewers to know that some of you guys that are in office, you lost before when you started, mm -hmm. right? And so that didn't stop you, which I, I find uh, like a really good attribute because a lot of people will run and you'll never hear from them again. Right. But we've got people in office that, you know, okay, so I lost, but I'm going to keep going on. And you did. Keep on keeping on. And the, so you switched over to the city race, which came up a few months later. Correct? Right. The, um, but you had a great campaign. Well, thank you. Yeah. And, 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 and my and wife is very kudos kudos to, kudos, kudos to Lynn for that one because yeah. that was a kind of an interesting way to portray your very long name <laughs> and uh, get it across Dingfelder, which would seem like such a hard thing to do, and played it really well in, yeah. in that campaign. Well, our friend Patrick Montego over at La Gazette always used to tease me, and he'd say, John, he said, with a name like Dingfelder, it's going to be really hard to get elected. He, yeah. said, why he said, why don't you consider switching it to uh, Marvin, which is my oh, wife's right. name, right. and Marvin, and uh, you know, to be John Marvin, you right. know, just something nice, plain vanilla sort of thing. Right. So, Pat, I, I had a good story with that. So, so when you know we lost, we lost to Kathy Castor. She was a tough opponent. She's yeah. now a, a wonderful, well-known well well uh, name, good last name, and hard to overcome. Mm -hmm. So uh, and now she's doing a great job in Congress, and I, I appreciate and admire Kathy. But but anyway, so along comes the city council race, and and eventually we did prevail. And uh, on on election night, I I called Patrick up. And uh, he answered the phone, and I, and, uh, and I said, Johnny Marvin here. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't need to be at all, right? <laughs> so I had, to, I had to be a little smug and say, you know, we, we won in spite of the name Dingfelder. So. so that's 2003. Right. And you've been, now, this is two ter second term. Second term, we got reelected uh, 2007 without a, without a runoff, which I was very proud of. So you're in right now till 2011. Right, another four-year term, and uh, now having been in all these places around our community, you know, in education and in county government and land use and zoning, and you've been on. I mean, I've seen you. I've fallen asleep to you on the variance committee. <laughs> I won't I'm take sure, offense. like, don't take offense. <laughs> I think some of us we may put. Well, we learn a lot about government while we're sleeping sure. too. But you know, oh, there's John. He's talking about something. Let's watch that for well, a while. Well, what's really bad is, is like, you know, I'll come home from a meeting, you uh -huh. know, a night meeting, and I'll be all wired up, you know. Oh, and yeah. then what what the city channel does is they rack yeah. it up and run it again. Right. You know. So then I'll lay, I'll lay in bed and I'll start flipping channels and. You'll and, see yourself. And I'll see myself, and, and I'll say, you know, it's like, well, that's kind of interesting. And, and Lynn, <laughs> Lynn says, you know, do we really have to watch that over again? You, know, like, <laughs> yeah, right. no, you don't second guess yourself, do you? You're like, oh, no, I should have looked sometimes, like that. I should have said sometimes that. Sometimes you do in terms of what you say. Yeah. Right, and all of that. So, having done all of this, and, and uh, so what do you think are, are for us, uh, the city of Tampa, uh, residents, what do, what do you think are the big issues that we really, maybe we're not even looking at, but um, that are in front of us today? I mean, that we that we we need to be looking at. Yeah. Well, you know, it's 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 interesting when uh, now that I've had a chance to reflect a little bit on almost, almost six years on council, um, I I look back and I and I realize the, the big issues are very hard. You know, they're hard to accomplish. Um, the, you know, the challenges of, like we talked about, transportation, mass transit, those sort of things. Those are, you know, huge issues, big money issues, and they need to be addressed and they need to be tackled. And we are. But they're so complicated that <laughs> well, you complicated. have to almost back off them, right? Well, don't, not necessarily back off, but you have to, you know, plot along and, and you know they're going to take 20 years. You know what I mean? I mean yeah. It's like, so, you're, so you're trying to tackle something you really are not going to see 
the well, end result of might, quickly. I mean, you're not, not going to sit, yeah. And that's true leadership is to take on those issues and stick with them. I admire Linda Salcena tremendously because there are certain issues that she has dug into, like Kennedy Boulevard oh, and, right. and, 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 you know. Her name is synonymous with Kennedy exactly, Boulevard. Exactly, livable city issues and things like that. And, and, and she has stuck with them for almost 20 years, and I admire the heck out of that. I'm more in the earlier part of, of any kind of you know, career, political career in that regard. But what I, my point was is when I look back over the six years and I say, you know, what have you accomplished, a lot of times it's the, really, it's the smaller things, you know, the, sort of the smaller successes. Um, uh, sometimes people don't even know about them. I and I'll give you an example. Uh, about three, four years ago, uh, I was talking to developers and, and talking to neighborhoods and that sort of thing, t thinking about these, how can we make our community more livable? And, um, and this idea came up about front porches. And you know, a, a lot of our, parts of, the, parts of our city have front porches, Hyde mm -hmm. Park, Seminole Heights, the, the style, the building. Bayshore, off of Bayshore. Bayshore, right. right. And, and the style of living was more conducive at the period that they were being built to having front porches. But then there are other parts of the city where you know, we, we got into this ranch style with air conditioning. Let, we don't need to go out on our front porches and talk to our neighbors. We're going to drive into our garage, close up the house, and never go outside until we get back in our air conditioned car and leave. Well, you know, the, which is all fine. Everybody can do that. But what we find is, is when you have front porches in Florida, six months of the year, you know, people use them. And they sit on the front porch and they have a cup of coffee or a drink or whatever and they say hello to their neighbors when their neighbors are walking by. True enough. And you get to know your neighbors and the other thing is the police love it because it creates what they call eyes on the street. So anyway, long story short is, is, is that we created an ordinance at city council uh, which is the front porch ordinance and, and which encourages uh, through certain development conditions and setback issues and that sort of thing, but it encourages Peop, developers and homeowners to be able to either add on a front porch onto an existing house or put a front porch on a new house. And so, the, you know, it's a very small thing, but every now and then I see a, a front porch pop up and I go, you know, I wonder if they took advantage of the ordinance in building that. That's really interesting. I just really had a, uh, an opportunity a month ago babysitting for my very first granddaughter, which is just a thrill and, and a half, off of Bayshore Boulevard. And I went out on the porch while the baby was sleeping, or maybe I had the baby with me because I did that a few times too. Walked out there, and a neighbor came by and sat and talked to me for 30 minutes, and I didn't know her wasn't my neighborhood. Exactly. But you know, I know now a lot about her, and you know her what 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 her husband does, what she does. And you're right. I would then if if we were all doing that, certainly we'd know if something strange was happening mm -hmm. in the neighborhood because we'd know what is familiar to it and what isn't. And those type of experiences really build community. And, and, uh, and I think, you know, in some ways it, it's sad because I think we've lost some of that, um, you know, and, and like I say, uh, you know, some of us on council, including Linda and sometimes Mary Mulhern and others, when, you know, when developers come in front of us, sometimes they really complain, um, you know, because they say, well, council's so hard on us, you know what I mean? Council's so difficult and they make things difficult and this and that. But I think if, if you cut through all of that, what, we're real, what council very often is doing is we're not, we're not necessarily saying no to this project or no to that project. What we're saying is, is you know what, bring the best possible project to us. And that's not for the sake of si the city council. It's not for the sake of the tax rolls. It's for the sake of making that project better, which will make our community better. Um, you know, this project that's not very far from you, it's called... Um, what are they calling it? West Side? The West Tampa area? Uh, it's the just in the back here. Um, I think they call it West, West something or the West Side or, or it's near West Tampa. But anyway, okay. it's a big project right back here near, near UT. And, um, and, and he's putting in hundreds and hundreds of, of condo units and they already started building them back here. And we said this, we said, you know what? They all exit to the inside and to the garage. So there's no exposure to the outside, to the road and that sort of thing. Why don't you put on some terraces where people will actually go sit, you know, and, and talk to the passer buyers or, you know, mingle or, you know, make, make some exterior entrances and that sort of thing. And they did. And that's interesting because yeah. townhouses and condos, even though they're, people are right next to each other, they don't know each other. They don't know each other. They don't know anybody on the floor. Right. Exactly. Except maybe so when they take their trash, maybe. Maybe they say hello in the elevator and they don't know where they're coming from. So yeah. you, you're right. It's a small, uh, 
appears like a small step, but it could make a huge impact well, it trickles over down time. To so many things in society. You How know do we I mean? handle you... the the issue of you know we're so spread out? I mean, we have we a city has a downtown Ashley Street, Tampa, that downtown. Then we have a downtown sort of, uh, you know, in West Shore, and then like we we have multiple uh, areas of, of business. How do, how do they, how is that going to get dealt with from a transportation uh, point of view? I, I do believe uh, that over the next uh, five to ten years that we will start linking, um, doing a better job of linkage. Um, and it really depends on where you're talking about in terms of what the mode of transportation is going to be. I think that, I think within the next ten years we will have some type of, of rail system that will connect the West Shore District to the downtown district and the airport. That would um, be grand. It, right? it has to. I mean, it, it just really makes so much sense. And when it does, all, the, all three of those areas will prosper. Um, you know, and, and maybe we'll have a few stops in between uh, to, you know, to bolster some of the neighborhoods that are in between. But, um, uh, you know, it's just, you know, if you look at any, all the major cities across the country, apparently there's only two. Uh, that don't have um, mass transit, and we're one of them, sadly enough. And, 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 you know, if you talk about linkage and connectivity, um, a lot of people have bad things to say about the streetcar, the trolley, uh, down, you know, downtown. It seemed like a costly proposition. Costly right. proposition. Tore you know, up the and, streets. Yeah, you know, that's what it is. What the heck did it and, and didn't have the ridership, and every now right. and then, you know, the, the networks will go over there and shoot empty cars. But you know what? When there are events, like the other day I went to that silly Flugtag. Right. Uh, 100,000 people. Event. 100,000 young people, you know, spending money, having a good time, right around the waterfront there. Um, and and I'm on the heart board, um, you know, and we, and we run the, the uh, streetcar. The streetcar was packed because people realized, well, heck, I'm not going to park anywhere near there. I'm going to park in Ebor, jump on the streetcar, go, go to the event, go back to Ebor later, have a drink in Ebor later, go, you know, have lunch or dinner later. So, and, and then it goes through Channelside. And eventually when we get more people living in Channelside, which will come, those buildings are not going to sit empty. Um, they will, people will come, and then eventually you'll get the same thing. You'll get young people living in Channelside. What do we want to do today? You want to go up to downtown and go to the museum or go to something cultural? You want to go to Ebor and party or whatever? You know, people are going to be using that streetcar, and in, in the long run, I believe that it won't be the folly that some people have looked at it in the past. It's just that, you know, you look at it like this. You know, there was a streetcar, they took the streetcar, now they put the streetcar back. Why'd you ever get rid of the streetcar? You know, it's Everything it's goes round and round. Yeah, right? yeah, it's just like it's always something else. Um, right now, uh, I know there's some decisions going on, and in November we're going to vote on unless something stops it, this county mayor idea. What do, you, do you have some thoughts on that? Uh, this has come up uh, in the past, but I guess not been on the ballot in such a way as it is now. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just yeah. uh, wondering, what do you think about it? Um, do you well, think it's, it's a good idea? It's, uh -huh. it's definitely interesting. Um, years ago, I was on, I was, uh, Phyllis Bizanski uh, appointed me to serve on the uh, county charter uh, commission and uh, the Charter Review Board, and uh, which was sort of a one-year uh, tenure as a volunteer thing, and I think 15 of us sat there and, you know, cogitated about, uh, about the Charter and, you know, did we want to change the Charter. And, and that, you know, that issue, and that's been 12, 13, 14 years ago, mm -hmm. that issue was front and center. Uh, Bob Samuels was one of my uh, peers uh, on okay. that, and he, and he was fighting really, really hard back then and now, 14 years later, he's still, you know, in the forefront of that group, pushing for the county mayor issue. Now, I'm going to admit that, that at that point in time, I voted against it. Right. Um, you know, we were just coming off of Fred Carl being the county administrator. We had a good county commission and a good balance with Mr. Carl, and I thought that things were working, you know, pretty well. But over the years since, there's been a, a strong perception in the community that that uh, the county has changed tremendously. The growth of this county, of the unincorporated county, is huge. And a lot of people feel very strongly that we need one single person, like in the city of Tampa, you know, we all know that the buck stops with the mayor, Mayor right. Pam, That's in true. the city of Tampa. Uh, city council has its role, 
Okay, but at the end of the day, everybody knows that she's the mayor and that's where the final decision is going to be made on a lot of important issues. And I think that people are looking to that uh, in the county as well. Pa Pat Bean does a, a fine job in the, in the role that she has, but the structure is something that she can't just come out and set policy uh, by any means because that's not necessarily... No, she wants to keep her job. <laughs> She's better keep four people pleased. Exactly. Right, that's exactly. The whole thing. So you're thinking you might vote the other way this time? I, I'm giving it serious consideration. Mm -hmm. I, I haven't made a commitment and, and not publicly, but I've had some chats with Marianne Stiles, who's a big proponent of yes. it. Yes. And, uh, and, and I'm, you know, serious, seriously considering it because we are a different county and, um, you know, and I think that in some ways, uh, when I look up in Orange County in Orlando, you know, and, and, and of course in Jacksonville, they went even further with consolidation. Right. Yeah, consolidation would be good for us taxpayers, I think, but this doesn't even take that into yeah, consideration. No, and, we, and we don't want to get it confused with <laughs> consolidation, but, but it's, a, you know, it's, it's, a, it's definitely an interesting and a big step for this community. What I would do is encourage folks to just read about it as much as possible and get and get better informed. Right, we're going to we're going to run our programming on it because we had uh, we had the pros and the cons on it. Right. We did a show on it. We're going to just keep running those shows so that people can get some some thoughts about what everybody's thinking. And and you know what? Hard I mean, to do. People think about the county. Oh, well, that's the county. That's out in Brandon or Lithia or what have you. No, you know what? The city of Tampa, is in my constituents, is in the county, and if we go with this county mayor, it has a big impact on the city residents, too. So city residents need to plug into this issue and get, get informed and figure out what they want to do. You know, one of the things that's on our agenda here at uh, Tampa Bay Community Network is, is the state video uh, franchise law that got passed. And, uh, we, uh, it looks like we're running out of time, but I certainly hope, I think we're going to uh, count on you to try to help us with that, too. Or I'll be, be, be glad to do what I be can. Be behind us uh, I think that trying to get it amended. Over the years, uh, I think that this, this network is a wonderful thing, and, and the community needs a voice, and, uh, and you all keep up the good work. You know, we're trying to preserve that First Amendment. We really are. We appreciate your uh, coming to see us today and talking to us about your background and what's on your mind. And uh, we'll come back another time. We'll you keep will chatting. come back another time. We'll talk to you about the bu budget initiatives that are coming up. Thanks much, and uh, we'll uh, see you soon.